Right. Uh, well, I think it's time now that we should talk. Uh, we should talk more about Ireland's um, first bugle here in Ireland. Uh, so, give me a cheer if you are if you are Irish, <laughs> and uh, who here is not Irish? <laughs> and um, uh, mostly f- mostly female response to that. Yeah. They come here for the hot Irish men. Oh, right, OK. That's right. But we all do. Um, and, um... Preach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I'm, uh, I'm uh, as, you, as you all know, I'm, I'm from England, and we, 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 we share elements of, of, our, of our past, clearly. <laughs> and I, I went to a rather traditional English private school, and it is fair to say that the history of Ireland was not the most assiduously taught subject, <laughs> as it generally isn't in any English school. <laughs> and that uh, it has in common with, for example, any other thing we may be embarrassed about from our history. And in fact, I have the, uh, the school textbook uh, of the um, history of Ireland for English schoolboys. <laughs> Here it is. It's basically all I, was taught, all I was taught about Ireland at school. It was quite nice, then something went wrong with the potatoes, the end. So, so David, I mean, I, I, I left my school, I went to a very, very, uh, very good school in many ways, but it did leave me with certain gaps in my knowledge of the world. For example, well, clearly the entire history of Ireland and the other side of the British Empire um, left me with gaps about, for example, how to rewire a plug, how to change the tyres on a car, how to talk to a girl. Um, <laughs> what to do to a girl once I'd talk to it. Um, do, 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 they, do they need feeding? Um, do, do, do they osmose? Um, um, so huge gaps in my knowledge of the world, albeit that I was able to express those gaps in grammatically perfect Latin. So, absolutely. Thank you very much. But, so, David, uh, can you, for, my, for, for an ignorant Englishman, please exp- explain a little bit about the history of Ireland. Chris, could you put on a YouTube clip called... Irish music, sad. (laughs) Ireland was founded by footballer Stephen Ireland in 3000 BC. Ireland's indigenous people were the leprechauns, or lepricians, as nobody's ever called them, but they died out tragically owing to the fact that they were all male. (laughs) <laughs> and never existed. Nothing kills the people off quicker than never having actually existed. Your next major character in Irish history, Andy, is St. Patrick, the patron saint of strangers taking a shit behind the wheelie bin in your front garden. And that is how he is commemorated for one day around the world. St. Patrick got rid of all the snakes and so thorough was he, he got rid of any archaeological evidence that there might ever have been snakes on the (laughs) island. (laughs) Around the first millennium saw the arrival of the Vikings. And they're so unlike any Scandinavian people I've ever met today. It's like one day they must have woken up and gone, hey, you know, let's not rape and pillage anymore. Let's invent social democracy and Ikea and Lego and aha. (laughs) Then nothing happened in Irish history for 600 years till the arrival of Oliver Cromwell in 1649. And he, he absolutely wrecked the place. Although seen as a modernizer in Britain, still seen as that today. In Ireland, he is seen as a genocidal f***head. <laughs> potato, potato. <laughs> Who caused a population drop-off that some expert put as high as 83%. 83% of the Irish population. Thanks, Cromwell, you barrel of rancid wangers. <laughs> Excuse me if I occasionally visit the British House of Parliament where there is a statue of you to take a shit just in front of it. (laughs) Cromwell was eventually defeated by Conor McGregor at the Battle of (laughs) Crumlin. In 18 proper 12. (laughs) With his rallying cry, you'll do nothing, you f***ing prick. (laughs) But McGregor was in turn defeated by Queen Victoria at a bout in Las Vegas where he had motivated her by criticizing her family, her nation, and her religion. (laughs) 
<laughs> Queen Victoria loved Ireland and left us with her greatest legacy, the shop Victoria's Secret on Grafton Street. Short for Victoria's Secret was that she wished she'd, ju- she'd done more to prevent the Irish famine, 1845 to 1849. <laughs> this is like shooting fish in a barrel in front of these people. <laughs> Ireland has always loved a craze, from line dancing to yo-yos, from Tamagotchis to Catholicism. <laughs> but they tend to come and go. <laughs> they say you only play this town twice in your career, said the Pope in Dublin on his recent visit. <laughs> Once on the way up. It's great to be back. And the 11 people in the crowd jiggled their rosary beads and shook their little bags. Although nominally a republic, Ireland is still a mystical place ruled over by Enya. (laughs) I've never met Enya, but apparently you can recreate the feeling of meeting her if you put your peen slash lady peen in a Dyson Airblade. (laughs) If you feel something crazy in the air listening to this podcast, That's Irish presidential election mania! (laughs) For some reason, a reason nobody can quite remember, Ireland has a Taoiseach or Prime Minister and a President. The President is a non-political role, the idea of which is that you do the gigs the Prime Minister doesn't have time to do, such as shaking hands at the rugby and apologising for institutional atrocities the Prime Minister has committed. The runners and riders have assembled for this once every seven years event, and what a group. There's the incumbent, Michael D. Higgins. (laughs) A tiny wizard poet who negotiated the tricky events of the last seven years with aplomb. He hosted the Queen's first ever visit to Ireland without giving her a wedgie. and commemorated the centenary of the 1916 Rising without mentioning that he'd love to give the Queen a wedgie. (laughs) Job done. So he should get to do it for another seven years, and everyone wants him to, with the exception of five people. (laughs) The five other candidates who are running for his job. There's no reason to mention the other candidates because you'll never hear of any of them again. Suffice to say that most of them, three out of five, have been dragons on Ireland's Dragon's Den. (laughs) And they look like they're only running for president for a prank they lost with one of the lads at the golf club. (laughs) The other two are ladies, and they hate science. (laughs) Michael D. Higgins will definitely win, and he'll have another sweet seven years in front of him, where his main job will be to commemorate the centenary of the War of Independence in in 2019 without giving the Queen a wedgie, (laughs) and the centenary of the Civil War in 2022 without saying he wants to give Michael Collins slash Eamon de Valera a wedgie. (laughs) See, it's a hundred years, and we're still not over it. (laughs) Oh, Ireland. Who said comedy can't be educational? <laughs>